personal finance expert and MeVest founder, Leslie Ann Scorgi, joining us on Canada Now. And Leslie Ann, a recent article of yours in The Star discusses six questions to ask when rejected for a job. Job rejection is hard to deal with at the best of times. However, it actually gave me an opportunity for us to learn from the experience. And when I was preparing this piece in the star, it was really to address, I think, a pretty interesting trend. So what we're seeing is that mo like a lot of people are changing jobs right now. Some of it has been forced upon them, like the pandemic, uh, it, it put a lot of people out of work, but it also changed like required skill sets for so many different businesses because businesses went digital and guess what? They're not going back. So, um, you know, when, when I was preparing this piece, the trend that I was seeing is people are, they're applying for jobs and sometimes they themselves are actually saying, no, that's not the right fit. Or they're getting these rejections that are sometimes loaded with great feedback that's helpful and sometimes not. So we want to get to the bottom of the reasons why maybe you didn't get the job that you really wanted. So uh, this will be relevant if you were applying for something and it was, in your opinion, a great fit and you're, you're pretty, you know, in a funk because you didn't get it, digging in is, is the, the right way to go. Yeah, this uh, certainly could be a learning experience. And if you don't get that learning experience out of this, then it would have been wasted uh, for the most part. And the universe has a way of working out, doesn't it, Leslie Ann? Like, it, if you I didn't get this job, there might be a reason for it. I, I agree. So I, I know in my uh, previous life, when I didn't get a job, uh, I, and I distinctly remember one moment when I didn't get a job and I was, I was in tears about it. I had thought it was going to be the best position, but I was able to sit down after the fact with the recruiter on that job to find out why I didn't get the job. And that was like gold. So as we're thinking about rejection, if we ask very specific questions, and I've got six of them, uh, and these are the questions that I, I actually used when I was finding this, these nuggets of gold of why I didn't get my dream position years ago, and, and they're still very relevant today. So one of the, the first, the, the first question is when you're, you're sitting down with a recruiter who may or may not be like wanting to share this information, your first question is, tell me more about what made that winning candidate stand out for you. And I know in my experience, uh, when I had that rejection come in, turns out the winning candidate had direct related experience. They were making a lateral move. They had five years direct related experience. That was really helpful information for me. The next question was, um, you know, was there something very specific that I said or did in that interview that caused me to not get the job. And maybe, maybe you made a mistake. Yeah. Maybe you said something you, you really shouldn't have said or made a comment you shouldn't have made. <laughs> right? right, right. Yeah, because you never know. Like maybe you would have made a comment that really wasn't that big a deal to you or to, to many other people, but they may have had a previous experience that would make them sensitive to something like that you, you never you just never know so it's good to ask I I think so too it's actually a question that I ask so when I've been working with someone uh, or a, uh, you know an organization directly and let's say there's no continued work after the original piece of work is done I ask that question was there something that I said or did that made you think twice or, or not want to continue the work? 
it's gold. The answer that you get back is gold if the person is able to share those details. So talk about details. The third question is, uh, can you share more details about very specific aspects of the position that I wasn't suitable for? Gold mine here. Imagine the recruiter tells you, you know, what we really need here is for you to get this very specific accreditation. Now, with that kind of information, you can go back, you can take action. I know for me, when I, uh, and I, I lean back into that uh, example I was sharing before, it was actually the prompter for me to go and get my securities license. I did it so fast after I got that rejection because I hadn't completed it at that point. What a gold mine of information. Yeah, it's gonna open up a lot of doors, absolutely. Yeah, and then you can kind of drill in with this next question. Was there a specific um, gap in the skills that I had that you think I had? And, and find out that skills gap. Again, it's something that you can control and you can close that gap. And the last item or, or the last two items are, you know, mm -hmm. could I prepare differently and were my salary expectations maybe a little too aggressive? This is yeah. all really useful information. I once had, it wasn't necessarily a job interview because they were giving me the job. And I may have told you this before, Leslie Ann, but, uh, I had left a company and uh, about a year and a half, two years later, uh, a, a person was leaving and it would have been a step up for me. So yes. they called me back and said, Hey, can you come in? So-and-so is leaving and we want to, we want to talk about it with you. And I knew they were giving me the, why else would they want to talk to me? Because they wanted me to have the job. And before I went in and talked to them about the job, the person that was leaving called me and said, Hey, I know they're bringing you in to replace me because I've left here's how much I make. So if wow. I never had that before, I never had anybody say that to me before. They said, this is how much you make. So if they don't give you this much money, they're lowballing you. So know that they have that money uh, going in. Uh, and they, they offered me his salary. So there was no problem with that. But armed with that information, boy, that helped a lot. Absolutely. So you're actually getting to a point I think is really important. The whole reason uh, jobs and job discussion and the great resignation that we've all read about in the news is happening right now is people are fed up with being underpaid. In the pandemic, you'll remember at the very front end of the pandemic, we had a lot of organizations trim back salaries. They said to their staff, you know, we, we have to make decisions about whether to keep you on or trim back salary and trim back salaries, or we do layoffs. Well, guess what? Here we are over 24 months later, and many of those organizations have not reestablished pre-pandemic salary levels. So no surprise here. We're seeing people say, I got to take care of my financial health, my overall wellness, and this is a big prompter. So, you know, I'd say four or five years ago, most people were attracted to positions because of the total picture, salary, benefits, culture. Those are all very important. But right now we're looking at conditions in the market where salary is hugely important because people they need to save we've got hyperinflation on the on the uh, on the horizon and you know the cost of just about everything is going up so i think it's a very relevant timely conversation so to this point we've talked about hey you've gotten an interview so talk to the interviewer uh, about what didn't happen how, how did i not get this gig what if you haven't gotten the interview so that usually means that you have something not working quite right in your LinkedIn profile or in your resume. Now, I will let everyone in on a little secret. Recruiters also do a Google search on the candidates that, that are rising to the top. 
they search to see who's out there. What kind of profile do you have? They're going to spend some time there. There could be something amiss on your resume. There could be mistakes, you know, mis misspelled words. There also could be something that isn't a hook there. So imagine your resume looks just like everyone else's. You're not going to get in the door for an interview. And just imagine, I think this goes without saying, imagine you have a dreadful picture of yourself that's very <laughs> incriminating uh, that would come up on a Google search. That would be, you know, Google search yourself as you're, as you're finding that you're not getting these interviews, go and look, Google search yourself. Is there something there that's coming up? Do I need support? rewriting and recrafting both my resume and my LinkedIn profile. Here's a hint. If your resume is off, for sure, your LinkedIn profile is probably off too. Yeah, yeah. And what would be really helpful, and you pointed out in the article in the Star List, Leanne, is working with a career resource center or hiring a coach. The one time I've been let go, what they did with the package was they said, we're also going to give you X amount of appointments uh, to to meet with a, a coach at a resource center, something like that. And um, a lot of people didn't take advantage of it, but I did. I said, well, yeah, I've now got time. Why not? It might be educational or it might be a complete waste of time, but that I have to waste. So I, I went and did it and I learned so much about how to put a resume together, uh, interview skills. It really helped a lot. I think that's so amazing that you took advantage. I see time and again, most people don't. They're too slighted and angry about the, let, the, yeah. the layoff that yeah. they don't take advantage of the 30-day support that they get after they leave whatever job. Take advantage of what is out there. So, so that you know, I still talk to a career coach. Here I am 16 years into my career and I have quarterly checkpoints with my career coach. And I learn new things about myself, about the industry, about what I could be doing different, better, be more efficient. I am learning every single quarter how to, how to get my business growing in the direction that I want. So, you know, whether you're seasoned, whether you're new, take advantage. Yeah. Some other things to look at that you mentioned in the star uh, as well, Leslie, Ann, is to find out if you were discriminated against and, and you have some experience with that in supporting a couple of women that, that yes. recently have been. Yeah. So we don't, I mean, don't kid yourself. Discrimination is happening. Sadly, it is still happening. I have just dealt with two very specific issues on pay discrimination for two women that I am working with right now. And uh, it started with them having a feeling like maybe the, the job offers were off. They seemed to be under market. Then with a little bit of corroborating evidence, if you will, uh, and very similar case, they actually found out the pay of previous people in the roles or mm -hmm. colleagues in similar roles. And uh, they, they, you know, I coached them on how to go head on with the head of their hiring department and take it up with them. Both of these women were women of color and I see it time and time again. So we have data that shows specifically black women are highly discriminated against in the offer process. So the actual dollars that are being offered to, to black women tends to be lower. I flag this right now because I think it's a big issue and corporations need to, uh, you know, have total consciousness about the offers being presented to anybody. Right. And so I think, you know, if you've got an inkling that maybe your job offer is uh, predatory or discriminatory, take it up. And there are some very helpful resources um, that I think are worth looking at. So Payscale, 
Randstad, LinkedIn salary, uh, benchmarks for, from databases like Mercer and professional associations, all of those resources will give you a sense of what the appropriate pay is for a specific job. So if your offer isn't aligned to those specific jobs, let that rater go off. It should go off. And you can decide, you know, if you feel like you've been discriminated against, take it up. Don't hold back. Excellent advice. Do all this. You could end up with an even better job and make more money. Check out mevest.ca, personal finance expert, mevest founder, Hank and Dot's mom, Leslie Ann Scorgy. Leslie Ann, always a pleasure, my friend. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, Jeff.